Hi, my name is Fred Brito, and you've probably seen me on Dateline or Dr. Phil, but do you really know who Fred Brito really is? Well, I think in a few minutes, you're gonna be able to see a series of interviews that I did actually for Dateline and Dr. Phil, and you're gonna be able to kind of piece together who Fred Brito is. And I think that as we go through this interview, you're gonna be able to really kind of get in touch and feel and see not only who I really am, but also to understand why I had to do what I had to do in order to survive. All across America, there are people who are being released from prison every single day. 76,000 every single day are released from prison. And this is what they're gonna be encountering when they come out. When they leave prison, they're gonna be thinking that it's gonna be easy to get a job and they're gonna start from scratch and never ever think about going back to jail. But the reality of it is that here in America, society is clearly unwilling to forgive and unwilling to forget. And that's how my story kind of evolves. It, the whole Fred Brito story came from an unforgiving society. I had to do what I had to do to support and defend to protect my family. And that meant that if they weren't gonna hire me the right way, through honest means, I had no choice but to fabricate my resume and become somebody who I was not. He's played more characters than De Niro. Good evening and welcome to Dateline. I'm Stone Phillips. And I'm Ann Curry. Talk about a career. The man you're about to meet has worked as a courtroom doctor, a dedicated pastor, a Red Cross fundraiser. But his resume was most remarkable for what wasn't on it. One ounce of truth. What this man really was, was the ultimate con artist. And you'll be surprised at who fell for his tricks. What's wrong with this picture? Here's the happy couple, the beaming priest. But something's not at all what it seems. Say hello to Fred Brito. On this day, he was known as Father Fred. But on this day, he was a high-profile fundraiser, getting chummy with Hollywood stars. And here's a legal document saying that on this day, he was really a court-appointed psychiatrist. They're all Fred Brito, and they're all assumed identities products of the fertile imagination of a confidence man. A good con um, will go for the highest profile job he could possibly get. And that's exactly what Fred did, or still does. No one's quite sure. What is certain is that along the way, Fred has made his share of friends. His presence, you knew, was an angel that was sent from heaven. And more than a few enemies. He tricked state senators, the Red Cross, the courts, celebrities, a prestigious medical school, and the Catholic Church. Tonight, he'll even try to trick you. And you'll meet some of his victims who only learned they beyond when we told them. If you're watching and you recognize Fred Brito, you might be in for a surprise. If that happens, give us a call. In fact, we were in for a surprise as we did our best to untangle a huge web of lies. Born Frederick Brito, Fred grew up with five brothers and a sister in a small house in Los Angeles. Longing for the fast life drew a 20-year-old Fred to the Hollywood nightclub scene in the mid-70s. That's where Fred says he met and began a close friendship with Paul Lynn. I'm a warlock best known for his TV roles on Bewitched and the Hollywood Squares. I learned a lifestyle that I'd never participated in before, the lifestyle of Mercedes-Benz, living in Hollywood Hills, going to, to Beverly Hills restaurants, doing all the things that movie stars would do, and, and I got to meet a lot of movie stars. But the fast life ended as suddenly as it began. Paul in, you know, he had an entourage of people. He had usually five or six people that were friends of his. And, and I, at one time, was lucky enough to be the, the favorite chosen one until I got older and then cast off. With no money, no fast cars, and no place to live, Fred moved back home with his parents. It was a major, major culture shock. And I had to go get a job. The first job I got was at a bank. And uh, I had this lifestyle that I had to play, and I had no money to do it, and I ended up borrowing at that point. The word was borrowing, uh, which, naturally, I took 
$1,000 of traveler's checks. And I started a whole new life in Vancouver, wonderful city, met lots of people, did some things I probably shouldn't have done, and ended up in jail in Burnaby, British Columbia. You thinking to yourself somewhere along the way here, I'm a smart guy, but I'm not a very good criminal. Maybe I should stop doing this. Once you've had the lifestyle that I led, it's hard to come back. The Hollywood lifestyle was the, was the, the drug that uh, I became addicted to. I was in the fast lane, and all of a sudden, I'm now in the, in the slow lane, in the soft shoulder, in a sense. And I wanted to be in the fast lane. I've done anything to get back in the fast lane. And when Fred says anything, he means just that. It doesn't seem like the criminal justice system was really teaching you a lesson. They were trying to teach me a lesson, but I wasn't willing to listen. That was the problem. Having sat in so many different courtrooms, trials, or my own preliminary hearing, to master the vocabulary of the district attorney, the public defender. One day, while waiting for his own case to be heard, Fred heard a court-appointed psychiatrist persuade a judge to release a defendant into the psychiatrist's custody. I replayed that for a friend of mine. I portrayed myself as a psychiatrist and use all of the different vocabularies that doctors use. Nobody asked you for ID? Never. Or to see a medical license or Never. any proof at all that you're a psychiatrist? No, and it all happened in one day. And Fred says the judge released his friend. You're good. Was there a time after one of these prison stints where you thought to yourself, I'm going straight, I'm not doing this anymore? Yes, every time. And every time you go back to it? Exactly. Because you couldn't stop? It wasn't that I couldn't stop, it's that I had to survive. I had to find a way to either get a job, to get some money, or I had to do something to keep myself busy. That decision gave birth to a lot of people. All of them were part of one giant lie. Fred landed prestigious jobs, and in some cases received high accolades for his good work, all under different names. For example, take the story of Mark Gomez. Mark Gomez was an incredible individual and he gave so much back to this community his generosity and his giving made life for so many individuals much better and that's part of what makes the story of fred brito so difficult to tell because he tried to hide by doing good work and in the process he lied to nearly everyone in 1998 ken sanchez was the vice chair for the bernalee County Board of Commissioners in Albuquerque, New Mexico, when he first heard about Mark Gomez. There was a family of nine who didn't have a vehicle, and he purchased a vehicle for the father to get to and from work. There were families who could not pay the rent, and he paid the rent and the utilities so those families would not be homeless. You're describing a very genuine guy with a good heart unconditionally a good heart and what had he done before that i didn't know that i had never heard of mark gomez prior to that that's because the man named mark gomez was a product once again of fred's inventively dishonest urges but the glowing calls and letters that came into the commission about gomez were apparently both genuine and numerous and sanchez said the commission felt it was time to recognize Gomez for all his inspiring giving work. In April 1998, Sanchez and the other commissioners celebrated Mark Gomez's good work by awarding him a county proclamation. Not only that, Gomez received commendations from the New Mexico House of Representatives and the State Senate. Mark Gomez works and spends not only his money, but also his time and energy performing little acts of kindness because the extent of compassion he possesses for humankind is immeasurable. You're laying it on pretty thick, or else this guy is really a wonderful guy. Based on what we were told and when we met Mark, we think that he did a remarkable job. Okay. Well, you have told me a lot about Mark Gomez. Let me tell you a couple of things about Mark Gomez. First of all, his name's not Mark Gomez. His name's Fred Brito.